Everybody. Hello there. The time has finally come. A long, long promised video about how do I get my Jung Fu Shanti tone. I promised to make this video when I reach 100 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And now we are currently at almost 200. So I think it's finally time to do this. First, I will talk about some theory and about some misleads in this topic and then I will show you my settings on my amps and on my pedals and how do I use them. First thing you have to accept is that you will never get it 100% right just because you are not John. Even if you had the same pedals, the same amps and the same guitars, it just won't sound 100% like him. When it comes to tone, especially on electric guitar, there are many factors that can change your tone. For example, muting technique, picking technique, or the actual pick that you are using. Please don't waste your time as I did it. Don't hunt the tone and avoid actual playing the guitar. After this video, you will know how to get the idea of the tone the technique that John uses and then you should just practice and play and enjoy the music. So the first thing I want to talk about is the main idea of his tone. Many people think that his tone is clean but that is not true. His tone is actually more crunchy and it's more distorted than you think. He achieves this tone because his amps are pretty much cranked up. The second very important thing I want to point out is the EQ settings. I don't know why, but many people think that he uses a lot of treble, but that is not true. There are a lot of pictures, especially of his Marshall Silver Jubilee, that his treble is set only on 1 or 2 and his mids are pretty much cranked up on 7 or 8. The way I see why this band works so well and why the records are so great is the topology of the band. I see the way that Chet is doing the drums and the rhythm of the song, Flea is there to fill the bass, the low end, Anthony obviously is singing and for me he is feeling the high end of the songs and John is there 
to fill the mid-range of the songs. John uses his famous CE1 chorus assemble pedal, which has a built-in crunch boost. This pedal is really important for his tone, because it's pushing the amps even more. The second thing it does, it controls the volume jumps of his distortion pedals. So now there is another thing you have to accept, you just need some kind of overdrive pedal to push your amps even more and to control your volume jumps, especially the distortion pedals that are pretty much cranked all the way up. Next thing are the guitars. If you want to achieve John Stone, you must avoid clean pickups. So this is my number one strut that I use in uh, most of my covers of Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's a part caster that I built myself, that I relicked myself, and the main thing that I change are the pickups. I change the pickups for Fender Tex-Mex. They are quite hot and they will provide you the sound that you need. This is my another strut, I call it the Jimmy strut because it's white and I have a Yosemite pickups in this one. And for John Stone, they are far too clean. Now you can hear the sound example between these two guitars on the same amp and the same pedals. Now I will talk about amplifiers. The best thing you can do is to buy some tube Marshall amp. This will provide you the main idea of his sound, the main EQ, the main color of the tone. Of course you can get around with a Fender amp, but from my experience the tube Fender amps are far too loud, even 15 watts are too much for bedroom playing and you will not be able to crank the tubes the way you need. Most of Fender amps also comes with Fender speakers and this combination is just not right for John Stone. Important thing about amps is the actual amp channel that you are using. I highly recommend you to use overdrive channel for two reasons. The first reason is the volume. You can crank up the overdrive channel much much easier than the clean channel. If you use your overdrive channel, you can set up your gain on level 1 or 2 and it will start to break up naturally and much much faster and on much more usable volumes. The second reason are actual the pedals that you will be using for achieving John Stone. I found out that the overdrive channel, especially on these entry-level tube amps, works much, much, much better with overdrive and distortion pedals and overall it's just much more pedal friendly. Now, if you don't have any amp and you are recording directly through your interface, I highly recommend you a VST plugin called Amplitude. You can download a free version of Amplitude which provides two versions of Marshall amps. One of them is I believe the copy of JCM 800 which actually John used during the Blood Sugar Sex Magic era. Another one is some kind of plexi sound, it just, it just sounds good, it's, a, it's like a true tube Marshall. If you combine these two, you can get very very close to John Stone. And if you decide to actually pay for the plugin, you can get Marshall Silver Jubilee copy and the Marshall Major copy. For a while I owned an original Marshall Silver Jubilee head, so I could compare original Marshall tube head and the copy in this plugin. And they are very 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 close. When it comes to combining two amps, this is the point I want to say that John is really a genius. He uses a Marshall Major. The plexi amps like this, especially on the volumes that John uses, are not that sensitive on the EQ settings. John's plexi sound is kinda muddy and dark and it provides him a lot of low end and a lot of headroom. 
On the other hand, the Marshall Silver Jubilee is very very different. The EQ on this amp works just perfect. If you turn up the treble, you got the treble. If you turn up the mids, you got the mids. If you turn up the bass, it has bass. So the bright sound of the Marshall Silver Jubilee should be on the left, in your left ear, and the muddy dark sound of the plexi should be in your right ear. You will just get the best from both worlds. And when you smash them together, it sounds like this. The EQ settings on your amps that I recommend are these. I recommend you to use this as a starting point and then tweak something to achieve the tone you want to hear. Every amp is different, so we have to play with it for a while. There are two EQ differences between Fender and Marshall amp. The first one is bass. In general, Fender amps have much much more bass. So if you have a Fender amp, your bass will not be on level 7, but maybe around 2. It will be much much lower and it will be enough. On my Fender Mustang that I use, I have the bass all the way down and still it's too much. Another difference in the EQ is the mid knob. Actually, on many Fender amps there is not mid control. So you will have to play more with your treble and presence. Now I will start talking about pedals and the pedal chain. I will show you all my settings and how do I use them. I will talk you through my journey, when did I get them and why did I get them and why and when should you buy one of them. I will always place a photo of the actual pedal so you can see the actual settings that I use especially the Marshall Jackhammer because a lot of you are asking about this one. The very first pedals you should get are these two. Now forget about the wah, forget about modulation pedals. For the majority of the songs you will just need the overdrive and especially the Boss DS2. With these two or even only with DS2 you will be able to play like 90% of Red Hot Chili Peppers songs. When it comes to overdrive pedal, I always use the Marshall Jackhammer, but it's not necessary. I believe you can get around with Electro Harmonix Hot Tubes or even with a Tube Screamer. You just need something to push your amps and to control the volume of the other distortion pedals. Now the DS2, this is the must have pedal. This is the only pedal you cannot replace with anything else. John actually used a made in Japan versions and now they are made in Taiwan and there is a little difference between them. From my hearing the main difference is the high end. But you can always easily modify this with germanium diodes and you can change the resistors with different value to get more bass or less treble or anything you need. It's orange, it's loud, it says turbo, so it means it's great and it is true. This may be a surprise for you, but another pedal that I really recommend is this one. 
It's a Zoom G14 multi effect that I use for all modulations, delays, and even for chorus. This is the second pedal that I bought, and it gave me almost everything that I needed to have. It has amplifier simulation, cabinet simulation, many distortions, many modulations, it has great chorus, it has delay, and even LFO filter for Danny California. This pedal even has a looper and a drum machine, so as a beginner you can practice. I will talk about this pedal in the future, I will make one separate video about this one because it's great. And now that I have all the other actual pedals that you need, I can compare the simulation in Zoom and the actual pedal. Now it's time for some wow. The holy grail and the best thing you can buy is this. Ibanez VH10. There is a very very expensive version 1, which we will probably break. There is a less expensive ratio, the version 2, which I have. This is actually in metal enclosure, so it's undestroyable. And there is a budget version 3, the new with the ratio, which is also pretty good. All these work the same way, they sound very very similar and you will be satisfied with any of these. The depth knob on this pedal should be always on 10. Somebody can tell you that the depth knob actually controls the volume, but that is not true. The volume is always the same and the depth knob actually controls the range of your wah pedal. So there is no reason to turn it down. You will lose the frequencies you want. If you can't afford the actual VH10, I recommend you this and this. This is classic Vox Silvertop. This pedal is still selling, it's cheap and it's very very good. It's built like a tank and I believe you can easily kill somebody with this. This has the same frequencies as the Ibanez, but it lacks the boost and the distortion that Ibanez has. So I recommend you to stack it with some distortion pedal. I love to use this one, Marsh Governor, and together when you stack these two pedals, you are like 90% of the VH10 sound. <laughs> So, the fuzz pedals. John used a lot of fuzz pedals, but I sorted them into two kinds. The first one is Big Muff. I have a little Big Muff version which works just great. There is no comment on this pedal. You can hear it on my wet sand cover. <laughs> Another one is a Fuseride, this one is actually a copy, it's a handmade for me for 15 euros and it works great. The best example I think is the most famous intro of La Cigal show. John actually stacked the Fuseride and the DS2 together.
Next pedal that I bought, this is the newest member of my pedal board and it's this one. Boss C2 Bazaarcraft Chorus. You might occasionally use the chorus, but if you don't have 200 bucks for this, I think you will be good with Zoom or any other chorus pedal. The last pedal I want to mention is this one. It's the MXR Dynacomp. If you are more like to Blood Sugar Sex Magic era, you might need this one because this will provide you the punchy tone of John. So thank you all for watching, I hope I helped you. Now I would like to mention some YouTube channels that really helped me. They gave me a lot of knowledge, a lot of inspiration and I think it's the right thing to do to mention them. The first one is Viggy, he makes a great John Frusciante lessons and he makes a great comparisons between vintage pedals and new pedals. Another one is Will Galluccio. He has the triangle lap factory, let's say. He makes a great ratios of pedals. He helped me a lot of time. He texts me personally when I have some pedal problems. He actually helped me to rehouse uh, my fuzz ride. And he knows a lot in general about John Stone. Another one is Oliver. He is a friend of Will Galluccio. They work together and they build amazing pedals and they make great videos. And the last but not least is Dave Simpson. More than a half of my knowledge I got from this guy. I learned from him how to dial in my amps before I could understand what to do. I actually learned from him my first pentatonic scale that I use today. I learned from him many many John's songs and I just can't thank him enough for being what I am today. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope I helped you, I wish you the best and remember don't tweak the amp, don't fall into the infinity black hole of John Frusciante's stone and enjoy the music and play the guitar more. Thank you everyone, I see you next time.